Well, we're back again for another session of the 8th grade design project. If you're working with me, or you're designing what, you're using your own personal touch on uh, the design layout that I've used, that's perfectly fine too. Uh, if you've come up with your own design layout, uh, then that's also fine. You simply need to uh, periodically uh, take photos of it and uh, send it here to me on the Google Classroom or even in the comments section I guess you could attach it on the YouTube channel so there's been some uh, a few changes I've kind of looked at this a little bit during my uh, time that we have been uh, not together while you've been uh, doing something else for your other classes I would assume and I've made some changes to it that I think look better However, I'm also a little bit concerned that uh, it might make it more interesting to look at, but less communicative. Uh, but I'm going to kind of go with some of these decisions and just live with them anyway. And uh, one of them I'd like to bring your attention to is the way that I have this chevron right here, how it has overlapped the circle for one of the interests. And I thought that was interesting too, and so I decided to extend that. So I'm going to be experimenting with this here shortly. Furthermore, this black uh, stripe that's in the uh, concept piece here weaves its way through and behind these interests and comes out up over here. Well, I've kind of changed that a bit so that now it passes in front of this but behind this circle and then in front of this circle and then behind this circle and exits again. And that makes it more interesting to look at but then again it could also affect its ability to communicate the message I'm trying to get across. So I'm a little bit uh, conflicted about what I should do with it. So I'm going to work with it for a while. And, uh, and then I'm also going to attempt to get the uh, state of Ohio drawn in the middle of all of this today. And so there's uh, plenty to do. And as usual, there's never enough time in which to get it done. So we've got to stay focused here. And, uh, but this project is making progress and I'm pretty pleased about that. So I think I got my pencil ready. So I'm going to be using a ruler, of course, and an eraser frequently, um, and my drawing pencil. Now for this, I've kind of got this, I never really did get this quite right. So this is about a 90 degree angle right here, so I'm going to kind of fix this up a little bit. I don't like the way it doesn't look like it's running parallel. And so if that passes behind there and then over top of this, and I'm thinking about having it go all the way to here, which I think looks pretty good, that overlap and when you weave things together really is interesting. And then I'm going to have this line right here follow its original line, and I think it will go all the way up to the swamp. So it hits here, and then it will pass behind the circle and over top of the ring and end up in the swamp. Okay, so this is kind of interesting looking. I'm going to really need to be careful when I commit to these lines, but I'm pretty satisfied with it right now because I think visually it's going to be the right thing to do. Yes, I'll pass it over that. Okay, now we've got to do some customized erasing here. Now how would that happen? See, if it came under this and over that, that can't happen. It doesn't make logical sense. So this, unfortunately, has to go. But I kind of like the way it was working. But it didn't make logical sense. Okay. So, but this does make logical sense. Okay, so it does pass over the little circle. And then it passes under the ring. Okay, this is kind of stuff you'd see in M.C. Escher's work. And then it emerges on the other side of the circle and it passes over the black stripe 
And see, I think I will have it go all the way into the swamp, but I think it will not pass over the black stripe. I think it will pass under the black stripe. Alright, now we're getting somewhere here. Okay, see, now that is good visual interest. It kind of directs the viewer's eye from one place to the next. Now, I'm going to kind of hide that little corner that would appear there, uh, where that stripe from the chevron would pass beneath this. Okay, same over here. So this is a, now it's starting to get visually interesting, and it moves the person's eye around, and that's a good thing. That's what we're trying to achieve here. One of the elements of art and principles of design is movement. So moving the viewer's eye around is very important to the overall enjoyment of the piece of artwork. Now look, that little scrap right there is going to bother me. I may have to mess with that at a later time. Okay, so I, I like how that works. Now I could also make a case for if this passes into the swamp, then I could also con consider maybe taking this, passing it behind the flag and having it emerge over here and go through the mountains. And then the same thing right here, see. It would pass behind the flag and then it would emerge on the other side. And uh, that could be pretty interesting. If I were to draw it properly it would be. See, I'm not even following my own markings. Okay, so and that one's pretty good. So that might be an interesting idea too, and it, that way it'd be have some level of symmetry with its mate up there, and that puts more of the communication aspect back into it again. So when you have these areas that you can kind of see through or invite you to look behind them, that's uh, really visually interesting. That's what causes people to look around inside your picture. And that is what makes it interesting. To, and that's what we want them to do, especially with design work. Design work is supposed to be uh, communicating some sort of a message to people through the use of colors and shapes. And if you're not doing that, well, then there's something probably going wrong. Okay, I like that. See, we've got the big chevron here that was still included from the original layout work and another chevron right here. And if we're careful and we look at it, you can see there's still a chevron right there. So, that is pretty interesting, although I'm kind of conflicted about the way this line looks. It still is bothering me. But it appears to be lined up straight, so I guess I'll just have to cope with it. Alright, so I like the way it passes in front of the mountains here, too. So that gives it that more interesting sense of movement. Now, <coughs> I guess it's time to start working on... Uh, some of the uh, content in the middle here. And one of the things that I, I really got to address, and I've been avoiding it for a while, is the state of Ohio. On the original concept work, uh, I had the state of Ohio drawn as a state in there, and uh, it's really, I was pretty close with it, but I looked it up on a map, and uh, I wasn't as close as I had thought I was, so I, I do feel the need to uh, work on that. And I'm going to place it inside of this square and then erase away the layout work of this square. So um, I do have a, <coughs> a map, uh, and I'm going to have it just off camera here so that I can reference it, but you don't have to look at it. Okay, I'm going to keep my slip sheet down too. Okay, now it appears to me that this portion of the state of Ohio is a little bit higher than this portion right here. So if I were to kind of draw what I'm seeing here off camera carefully, it kind of tilts down and then uh, at where it's at Lake Erie, it kind of hits uh, kind of Port Clinton it looks like, and then it starts to curve upwards again but it never really quite gets to the same level. So I think this kind of dives down a little bit more here. Uh, Lake Erie is on there. And then this kind of comes up. And uh, there is a little flat spot at the top of Ohio, right in here, 
but it's lower than this corner, so it comes about right like this, the way I see it. Okay, so see, I can make this work. Now, d up here at the very, uh, very top of it, uh, although you can't see it on the, literally on the map, at this magnification you would be able to, is a little stick out for Sandusky, Ohio. That's where, uh, that's where Cedar Point is at. It's on the little peninsula. <coughs> okay, so this is taller. This is flat. So we're going to bring it all the way over here. That's where Toledo would be. In fact, we're going to dive this down a little bit more to represent the coastline. And I'm going to do some erasing. So I don't get confused. Okay, that's a little bit better. That's a little more accurate. That's, yeah, that'll work. Alright, now, uh, the side, the left side of Ohio is, or the west side of it, uh, comes pretty much straight downward and until it gets to about a little more than halfway of what I would say the square is. That farther than, well, yeah, about right here. Now, uh, the middle of the state, strangely, it's kind of shaped like a heart. That's unusual. So it, it, it wags along the Ohio River uh, through Cincinnati, of course, and then it waves on down like this. And that little point of it is almost directly below this. That's odd. Okay, so the Ohio River goes along, and then it has this strange, it goes upwards, uh, and it curves dramatically, and there's a big hook in the river right here. Okay, and then uh, it just kind of waves its way along until it gets up to here. Now this portion, this flat, straight portion up here is a little bit higher than it is over here. So probably about in here somewhere. Let's see how I'm looking at this. Okay, it kind of comes downward. That's where I messed up. And then it kind of works its way along like this. Okay, so... Now, so we've got actually a pretty good representation of the state of Ohio here. I've, I've never really tried to look at a map and draw it. I've always kind of drawn it from memory. And But I recognize it, having been a lifelong resident of the state of Ohio, the great state of Ohio. Okay, and so we'd be up here near Cleveland, and down here somewhere near Portsmouth, Portium as they call it, and the the locals call it, and then round in the hook of the river here, and then Cincinnati up in here somewhere, I-75 runs through there, it's almost like I-75, okay, and then I'll darken that up a little bit, and I'm pretty satisfied with that, so I'm going to spend a little time cleaning it up. And Ohio, uh, is Columbus is almost right here. Dayton is strangely probably about, uh, I'm looking at the map, and if this is where Cincinnati is over in here, then Dayton would be about right in here. So I'm going to just rough in a star there. That's where I'm originally from. It's Dayton, Ohio. Okay. There we go now. I'm going to put the map away. And we are going to erase out some stuff and continue on with our project here. And I'm going to start building up some lines and I'm going to uh, prepare myself to uh, draw the smaller details in now. So, And when you're working on a complicated piece of artwork, and I will tell you that this is a pretty complicated piece of artwork, um, you always have to work from you know the general things to the specific things, uh, and you will find that if you do that, you make a great deal more progress on complicated projects. And so, this being an eighth grade project, you know it should be a little more complicated uh, than some of the uh, projects we do in the lower level classes. And if it's an advanced art project, then it definitely should be more complicated because you've had the benefit of going through all of the previous art classes and, uh, and you should have learned from your experiences in those art classes and the instruction 
how to do a great deal of what we are doing right now. All right. Looking pretty good. I recognize that as the great state of Ohio. In fact, I do. It's not Iowa. certainly isn't Kentucky or Tennessee. Okay, so I need to darken up some of my lines. Just to keep up with them. Not lose track of where I'm drawing stripes. So I um, don't know uh, if your projects are uh, complicated like this. And you know the thing is, you never really set out to make them complicated. They just end up that way sometimes because you come up with a good idea, and then you know that leads you to another good idea. And next thing you know, you got so many good ideas going, you can't remember what the original idea was or you lose track of it. So that's a, an important part of uh, the planning is so that you can always go back to the plan. And if the plan was good to begin with, then you're going to be fine. And if the plan was somehow not so good, well, then you're probably experiencing difficulties right now. Uh, so uh, it's n planning out things is not to uh, limit the creativity, it's to uh, allow it to uh, run free within a certain boundary so that once you uh, plan something or you decide to make a project that you can see it through and uh, enjoy that moment of unity as it's called when your project that you made comes out almost precisely the way you had planned it and that's a very powerful uh, sensation. Okay, so now I'm going to darken up my state of Ohio for now. So it will show up hopefully on the camera as well. So Port Clinton and Sandusky, Cedar Point, Cleveland, Toledo up in here, and all the places in between. Maybe just the little slightest corner showing there. Okay. It makes me even want to put like a an Ohio State O in the middle of all of that. Okay, well this is uh, making extraordinary progress, at least in my mind. Uh, so it's time to start on some of the other more complex work, I guess. So you can always kind of check things off as you go along when you have your original concept piece. And if you're making super complicated artworks, you know, like architecture and murals, you have to constantly be go back and checking those things anyway. All right, I have you know I've got a bit of an issue here with this mountain because see this mountain it tilts this way but it doesn't really tilt that way over here, uh, so I've uh, taken a little bit too much artistic liberty with it. So I'm going to so that it flows naturally. I'm going to you know uh, fix that mountain a little bit. If you, if you can fix a mountain. Okay, and then we're going to erase that out. Fantastic. Okay, maybe one more hit with the eraser right there. And then the duster brush, of course, to keep things from looking all scrambled up. In fact, like there's been a small landslide up there in the mountain. Okay, now, um, we can just go around and bold a few lines and think about the next step here. I guess that next step, in my opinion, is going to be to start doing all of the smaller pictures in the s area that represents our interest. Maybe the symbols up on a... I do have to get back up to the uh, swamp up there again and draw in some information about uh, where my father is from. So, starting to bold up. It's starting to look pretty good. Okay, so this uh, marking right here is really bothering me. So I'm thinking I'll go to, like I say constantly, uh, you should work from the, uh, the easier stuff to the more complicated stuff. And so one, I'm starting to run out of easy stuff, but right here is the symbol for uh, manhood or masculinity, which would represent my father, who is from Louisiana, 
and I have that kind of coming up out of the water somewhere over in here, and I might just emphasize it a little bit more, but in some way it looks like it's hidden by one of the the roots of the cypress tree there. Okay, that's good. If I have that, I'm going to draw a complete circle just so I can get it the right shape, but then I will erase portions away. So it looks as though it's hidden in the water. Okay. So, I'm curious how uh, the projects are going out there in the uh, e-learning environment, whether or not uh, you're making progress. And So on certain days, uh, we if you've been in my classroom before, of course, you're familiar with uh, our working grades. And so the time is coming for those working grades to be submitted uh, on a weekly basis. We do that. And so that would be uh, after, you know, whatever the, the school week is uh, coming up. Next, uh, there are four-day weeks, and there are also, um, you know, typical five-day weeks as well. So uh, we um, will have to submit those. And there is a video that shows how that is done. Of course, there's a video for almost everything when we do e-learning. All right, that looks pretty good. I think I can do a little bit of erasing there because everything that's below this mark will get erased. And everything that's behind the symbol will also get erased. Okay, and that clean that out of there a bit. All of this, the little point of my arrowhead is kind of obscuring that horizon back in there, so I'm going to clean that out of there. Okay, now, so we're starting to get somewhere with this. Now I'm going to change over to a finer implement here, because now my erasing is getting to be a bit of a problem. If I smear it badly, it's going to affect the outcome of the project now. So what I'm using here is a uh, an old school typewriter eraser. So in the old days, when you uh, had to create a document, and uh, you know, a Google Doc did not exist yet, wouldn't exist for 25 or 30 more years, um, you had to type papers with a typewriter. And if you made a mistake, sometimes it was very difficult to correct those mistakes. And so if you had a certain type of paper, you could erase those mistakes and attempt to correct them. And you use an eraser like this. Now, when I was an art student in college, I discovered one of these because I was typing a paper, but I also discovered that it made a great drawing tool. And I'll bet out there somewhere you can still order these things, or you can maybe go to an office supply store and get one, uh, but I'm pretty certain you could uh, order them. A on Amazon, you can order almost anything. I think you can order a car if you wanted one. Okay, let's dust that and see how it looks. Not bad at all. Okay, so that's the symbol for manhood or maleness up there, and this is the symbol for womanhood or femaleness, which would be my mother. So my mother and my father, and we come together over here in the state of Ohio. So that makes some pretty good visual sense to me. There's something else I was seeing that needed to be erased, but I can't remember what it was. I'll get back to it. Alright, <clears throat> so it looks like we have to start now on some more of the complicated material, and we're going to start, I guess, just at the top and work on my way. I guess I'll go this way so I don't drag my hand through my artwork as I go. So at the top of all this is the um, uh, the common symbol for marriage is two interlocking rings. And in this case, I'll probably attempt to use a compass on this and see what how big of circles I can get. So I may have to experiment with that on a on a surface like this. See, I think that's going to maybe be too big. May, yeah, so I'll probably have to go down to a smaller one. 
So what I'm probably going to have to do is have a circle. Maybe I can read now. I better just rely on it. They're probably going to have to be about right here. If I divided this in half, for instance, they visually figure out what I'm trying to do. And the rings are going to cross like right in here. Then I should put a dot about one half of that way, or maybe yeah, about one half of that way. Maybe over here similarly. Okay, so if this were the be cut across this way. Alright. Now that gives me something to experiment with. I might have to do the old trial and error thing here. So let's try this one right here. Okay, now my compass wants to jam. Alright, that I think that's gonna work. And then I'm going to go in the next one so I've got a tiny little circle there. Then I'm going to do the same thing, hopefully over here. Let me make sure I'm in the right one. Okay, yeah, so this would see that's going to probably maybe not work. Hmm. hmm. So what I've learned here is <coughs> those are good size, but they need to be, the dots need to be closer together. So I have to redo this, but only a little bit of time has been spent doing it. And anything that you learn from is, a, is a, I guess, a good thing. So I get out the pink eraser for this and just not erase my new adjusted dots. So trial and error is part of learning. Now, sometimes if you don't do some planning, you know, you want to... So I have the idea I wanted. I had just not worked out the precise manner in which to approach it. However, and I also know what I'm going to do now, so I've come to resolution there uh, of my brief dilemma. <laughs> so uh, that's easy enough to, to take as an adult. Uh, you know, it takes some getting used to when you're a student. Alright, so these are going to be the dots that I use that I adjusted, and I'm going to use the same size rings again. So I'll put it on the dot. There we go. And I'm going to go to the second ring. I believe that's what it was. Strike off the mark, and then I want to go in one. Maybe I'll go in. Better just go in one. Okay, now I'm going to do the same thing again. I better check this just to make sure I've got the right ring. Okay. It's right there. Okay. Now see, I've got the overlapping ring now, which is the symbol that I was looking to achieve. Boy, I should sharpen that pencil. Okay, very good. Okay, so I've got my interlocking rings and I can take out my layout work and uh, touch it up a bit because one of these, see, will overlap the other. Okay, and the other one would be fine. Okay, get these out of here, they offend me. Uh, now, by the way, this uh, eraser, this pointy eraser I'm using, has a very, very uh, rough material in it to scrub things out, and so if you're not careful with these kinds of erasers, you will you'll scrub away your drawing, <laughs> and uh, or scrub a hole right through it. You won't need a you need to figure out a way to fix it after that. Okay, so and this one passes behind the previous ring, so let's dust that with a soft brush. So I'm pretty happy with that. Pretty happy with that. So what it symbolizes. Okay, so the interlocking rings are a traditional symbol for marriage. 
and marriage is probably at the top of my list of things that are important to me. It's, it's kind of one of my interests, I guess, if you want to think of it that way. Okay, and then moving on over here, the next one should be pretty simple because it's a music note. And you know, sometimes you got to keep these images simple. So interlocking rings is simple. A music note is simple. And so I'm going to, although I might change that music note to be a little bit more complicated. So that means I'm going to have to make my ellipse here a little bit larger. And then I think I'm going to bring this hmm, down like this. So I'm trying to use, use this space up appropriately. And then Okay, so that looks pretty good too, and uh, okay, let's do a little bit of customized racing there, get these things tuned up a little bit. So I'm thinking that this part might go pretty quickly uh, because the drawings are small, don't take up a lot of space, as you can see. I'm trying to make that so these two are symmetrical. And then use my fancy eraser there to get in and trim all that material out of there so that it's ready when we get ready to color it in. And we'll take the take the colored pencil better. Okay, so now I can uh, do something like add some interesting portions to this, like a little dot that indicates that it means something else the, the length of time the note is held. That also is an indication of the length of time that you play the note for. So those of you that are musically inclined or experienced will know what I'm talking about here. Those of you that are not may be baffled by it, but you'll learn as you become a more aware musician and appreciator of music. Now, I like that. Now, the next one is um, art. It's one of my interests. In fact, it's, as you can see here, by what I'm doing right now, it's my vocation. So, uh, making uh, art and uh, teaching art is what I do, and so that's important to me. It's not just an interest. It's uh, something that's important to me. It's my career. And so I will also include that, which is, when I look at the original design work, there it is, so marriage, music, art, and this is traditionally represented by simply a, a painting palette. And so a painting palette is a uh, what large uh, painters use if you're familiar with painting uh, videos. And we will have a painting video eventually here. But it's what artists use when they're painting. It's kind of shaped like a, a kidney of sorts. The bigger ones are. And they come in all sorts of shapes and sizes, too. But this is the traditional uh, looking shape and size of a painting palette. And I'm not going to write art. I'm simply going to uh, use a symbol. Same with music. Same with wedding, my wedding rings. That's a symbol that we're trying to communicate here without having to really write too much information. Okay, so the palette looks pretty good. Maybe tighten up the lines a bit there. And uh, the paint palette has also got uh, colors on it, little splotches of paint. And we'll represent those just by little splotches of paint. And I think it's probably a good idea sometimes to simply pass a paintbrush through all of this so that people understand what they're looking at. And so if we start a line right here, and it emerges down here, that's like the handle of our paintbrush. And then it can come back up into here, 
we merge again up here. And that's going to be the end of it, but we're going to put a little pointy bristle on it. And uh, sounds like our time has about expired here today. Uh, however, uh, if you're making progress at the same rate that I'm making it, then you are doing a fantastic job. And if you're not, then you really need to work a little bit more efficiently with your time. Uh, and there will uh, projects will be due. And uh, when they are due, if you're not ready, there are grading consequences for that. Even though this is an e-learning class, uh, you still have to keep up with the projects and and you know let's uh, work on what you signed up for, which was an art class uh, at some point in time in the past. Okay, wow. Now all I got to do is just clean this up a bit. And these little pointy erasers are great for this kind of work. So if you can get a hold of one at an office supply store or just order one, I'd get one. What are they? They're called uh, Sanford eraser sticks. But they are great for helping you keep from destroying your work by not being able to erase fine small portions of it. Okay, I think I'll just bold that up. And that might be enough for this project today. I'll bet in the very next session the drawing portion will be done and we will begin the coloring portion of it. This is only, I believe, the uh, fourth day on this project. And so projects typically, typically take uh, 10 or 11 days. Um, so I think we're on pace to get it done in about 11 days. So let's take a look at what's been created here not bad at all. Uh, visually interesting the way all the stripes overlap. I like the changes I made. Uh, it adds to the motion of the picture and also still preserves it as uh, recognizable as a flag or a banner of some sort. So, good luck on yours. We'll be back together again.